I want you to do something for me right now, or at least as soon as this video is over. I want you to go to a mirror, get as close as you can, and look directly into your own eyes. Don't just look at the color, look at the structure, look at the crypts, the furrows, the rings. Because what you are looking at is not just a random biological trait, it is a map. It is a genetic receipt that has been passed down hand to hand from parent to child for thousands of generations. If your eyes are brown, you carry the code of the survivors who conquered the brutal sun of the ancient world. If your eyes are green, you are a statistical anomaly, a rare masterpiece of genetic mixing that connects you to the mysterious tribes of the Iron Age. And if your eyes are blue, well, then the story gets even stranger. Because, biologically speaking, you are a mutant. Science has recently discovered that every single blue-eyed person on Earth, from the movie stars in Hollywood to the fishermen in Scandinavia, shares a single common ancestor. One person who lived 10,000 years ago is the grandfather or grandmother of millions. In this video, we aren't just talking about pigment. We are going to decode your DNA we are going to trace the migration of your ancestors based entirely on the color of your irises. And we will answer the ultimate question. Why did evolution create these colors in the first place? Welcome to the hidden history of you. To understand the anomaly, we first have to understand the standard. For the vast majority of human history, spanning hundreds of thousands of years, there was no choice. Every human being on Earth had brown eyes. Today, nearly 79% of the global population still possesses this trait. From Africa to Asia, from South America to the Middle East, brown is the dominant force. But why? Is it just random? No, it is armor. The iris contains a pigment called melanin. It's the same stuff that colors your skin and hair. Think of melanin as nature's sunglasses. Our species evolved in the intense, unforgiving heat of sub-Saharan Africa. The UV radiation was lethal. Dark brown eyes are packed with melanin. This pigment absorbs light, preventing it from scattering around the inside of the eye. It protects the retina from sun damage and preserves visual acuity in bright environments. If you have dark brown eyes, you possess the original, battle-tested design of humanity. Your ancestors were likely the ones who stayed in the warmer climates longer, or they belonged to the great lineages that populated the Americas and Asia. Travel back with me to a time roughly 6,000 to 10,000 years ago. The Ice Age is ending. Agriculture is just beginning to spread. Somewhere in the region of the Black Sea, perhaps in what is now modern-day Romania, Ukraine, or Turkey, a baby was born. This baby carried a tiny glitch in their DNA. Specifically, on chromosome 15, in a gene called OCA2. Normally, the OCA2 gene acts like a factory manager. It tells the P protein to produce melanin, make it brown, make it dark, it commands. But in this one baby, a nearby gene called HERC2 stepped in and dampened the signal. It didn't turn the factory off completely, that would result in albinism, red or pink eyes. Instead, it just turned the volume down, way down. The result? The eye couldn't produce enough brown pigment to fill the iris and thus the first pair of blue eyes looked out at the world. This isn't just a theory. In 2008, Professor Hans Eiberg from the University of Copenhagen conducted a massive genetic study. He looked at the DNA of blue-eyed people from Jordan, Denmark, Turkey, and India. He found that they all had the exact same switch on their HERC2 gene. If this mutation had happened multiple times in history independently, the DNA sequences would be slightly different. But they weren't. They were identical. 
This leads to a mind-blowing conclusion. If you have blue eyes, you are intimately related to every other blue-eyed person on the planet. You are all descendants of that one founder near the Black Sea. You are essentially one giant extended family. But here is the puzzle. How did a mutation in one person spread to hundreds of millions? Blue eyes are a recessive trait. If a blue-eyed person has a child with a brown-eyed person, the brown gene usually wins. Mathematically, blue eyes should have vanished, but they didn't. They exploded. Why? There are two theories. Theory 1. The vitamin D hypothesis. As humans moved north into Europe, where there is very little sunlight, they needed to absorb more UV rays to produce vitamin D. Lighter skin and lighter eyes let more light in. It was a survival adaptation against rickets in bone disease. Theory 2. Sexual selection. This is the sexy eyes theory. In a world where everyone had brown eyes, the person with bright blue eyes was unique. They stood out. They were exotic. This novelty effect might have made them more desirable mates. The mutation spread because, well, people thought it looked cool. Now, I need to tell you a lie that you've probably believed your whole life. There is no such thing as a blue eye. I'll repeat that. Blue eyes are not actually blue. If you dissect a blue eye, don't do that. You won't find any blue pigment. You won't find blue ink. So why do they look blue? It's the exact same reason the sky looks blue. It's a trick of physics called Rayleigh scattering. Here is how it works. In a brown eye, light hits the iris and is absorbed by the melanin. Dark stops light. In a blue eye, there is very little melanin. So the light passes through the top layer and hits the collagen fibers in the stroma, the middle of the eye. The light scatters. The shorter wavelengths, the blue light, bounce back out to the viewer, while the longer wavelengths pass through. This is structural color, not pigment color. This is why blue eyes seem to change color. Have you ever noticed that? Depending on the light in the room or the color of the shirt you were wearing, blue eyes can shift from steel gray to bright ocean blue because they are essentially tiny mirrors reflecting the light around them. You don't have pigment you have the sky trapped in your eyes. Now, let's talk about the rarest colors, the ones that sit in the middle of the spectrum, green eyes. Only 2% of the world's population has green eyes. If blue is a switch turned off and brown is a switch turned on, green is nature trying to mix a custom paint color. Green eyes have a low amount of melanin, like blue eyes, but they also contain something else, a yellow pigment called lipochrome. Think back to art class. What happens when you mix blue from the Rayleigh scattering with yellow from the lipochrome? You get green. This color is heavily concentrated in Celtic and Germanic populations. In places like Ireland and Scotland, remarkably, up to 86% of the population has either blue or green eyes. In ancient folklore, green eyes were often misunderstood. In medieval Europe, having green eyes, especially combined with red hair, was dangerous. It was seen as the mark of a witch or a sign of a connection to the Fae, the spirit world. It makes sense. In a village where everyone had brown or blue eyes, the person with the piercing emerald gaze was intimidating. And then there is Hazel. Hazel is the chameleon of eye colors. It shifts between brown and green, often with a gold or amber ring around the pupil. Hazel eyes are a sign of genetic diversity. It usually means a mixing of lineages, perhaps a Southern European ancestor meeting a Northern European one. It is chaos and beauty intertwined. Nature doesn't stop at the primary colors. There are the outliers, the anomalies. First, gray eyes. 
often mistaken for blue, gray eyes are different. They have even less melanin than blue eyes, but they have a higher amount of collagen deposits in the stroma. This collagen scatters the light differently, blocking the blue wavelengths, creating a steel or silver appearance. Gray eyes are most common in Northern and Eastern Europe, places like Finland, Estonia, and Russia. They are the eyes of the deep winter. Then the wolf eyes, amber, solid gold or copper. Unlike hazel, amber eyes don't have green or brown specks. They are a solid glowing yellow. This is incredibly rare in humans, but common in the animal kingdom, wolves, eagles, owls. If you have amber eyes, you carry a very specific genetic concentration of lipochrome. It is a trait often found in parts of the Balkans, southern France, and surprisingly, pockets of Brazil. And finally, the myth of violet eyes. Did Elizabeth Taylor really have purple eyes? Yes and no. True violet eyes are usually a form of albinism, where the lack of pigment is so severe that you can actually see the red blood vessels of the retina reflecting through the blue scattering. Red plus blue equals purple. However, in Taylor's case, it was likely a very deep blue with specific lighting and makeup. But the legend persists. Your eye color isn't just about history. It's about your future, too. It affects your health in ways you might not realize. If you have dark eyes, you are less likely to develop macular degeneration and eye cancer. That melanin shield works. However, studies suggest people with dark eyes might be more sensitive to pain than those with light eyes. If you have light eyes, blue-green, you have a higher risk of sun damage. Wear sunglasses. But here is the weird part. Genetic studies from the University of Pittsburgh suggest that women with light eyes handle childbirth pain and anxiety better than those with dark eyes. Why? We still don't know. The genes linked to eye color, NCX4, are also linked to pain receptors in the brain. The connection is literally wired into your head. We call them the windows to the soul. And perhaps that is true. But they are also the windows to the past. Your eyes are the only part of your brain that sits outside your skull. They are the only part of you that directly interacts with the light of the world. Whether you have the deep, protective brown of the first humans, the mutant blue of the Ice Age survivors, or the mysterious green of the Celtic tribes, your eyes tell a story of survival. They tell the story of how your ancestors moved across continents, adapted to new climates, and found each other in the chaos of history. So I want to know your story. Go down to the comments right now. Tell me your eye color and tell me where your family is from. Let's see if the science matches your reality. If you enjoyed this deep dive into your own DNA, please hit that like button. It helps the algorithm find more mutants like us. And if you think biology is mysterious, wait until you see what we found buried underground. Did you know an entire city for 20,000 people was hiding beneath a house in Turkey? Click this video right here to explore the secrets of Derinkuyu. I'll see you there. We are on a mission to decode the forgotten chapters of human history, from underground cities to the very DNA inside your cells. The algorithm often hides these kinds of videos, so if you want to make sure you see the next episode, you need to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Become a part of the investigation. 
I'll see you in the comments.